Hansi Cronier was brought up a Christian, but it was never really a big part of his public image until a tragic incident quite early on in his international career. He was driving into Durban one evening, hurrying to be there for a match the following day. This kid crossed the road and unfortunately was killed. Uh, and it, it, it literally changed his life, I think. And after that, he, I think he was much more openly religious. Sitting there after the accident it made me realize that how quickly your life can be taken away from you. And that I wasn't certain at that time, geez, w would you go to, to heaven or wouldn't you? Uh, would you have eternal life or not? And I realized that I had to make a commitment then, uh, dedicate my life to the Lord and accept him as my savior, who's gonna give me an opportunity to have eternal life. Let's give him a large welcome tonight, amen. He felt that his life had a new purpose, a new destiny, that uh, he also would uh, pray a lot more, be more vocal about his faith, and, and also get very much involved with, with our outreaches, our social outreaches, our orphanages, things like that. Hansi Cronier is known as a man of integrity, as a man of God, as a gentleman. And Christianity and sport both play very well in South Africa, so to have a world-beating cricket captain who was also a devout Christian must have seemed almost too good to be true. It was. And you've also got to have the discipline in your life to make you succeed. Uh, discipline in your Bible study, discipline in your schoolwork, discipline in your sport. He was rumbled by the Indian police in April 2000. The Delhi police were called in on an extortion case as a result, they tapped some mobile phones and the conversations they alighted upon were, were not the ones they were expecting. The Indian police claimed to have evidence that Hansi Cronier had agreed to fix the results of international games and to supply inside match information to underworld bookies in return for tens of thousands of dollars. I then called him and I said, can you believe the level that some of these people have got to, to even want to accuse you with this nonsense. And he said, no, you're right, Pastor, it's nonsense. You know, I have not received any money, and I have never ever spoken to any of the players. And according to uh, some of the allegations, I spoke to players. Just like anyone else, my initial, when I heard about it, I said it's rubbish. He wouldn't do such a thing. That's how naive I was. And then at two o'clock, one morning, I got a phone call. I woke up, I was half asleep. Hansi was crying on the phone and he said, I've written a, a letter of confession and I'm gonna now send it to you. He issued a statement which was heavily religious and basically the gist of it was, when I turned my back on Jesus, Satan came and stabbed me in the back. He wasn't saying that the devil did it, I never did anything. He said he had allowed himself to get away from his Christian belief and principles. Was he sincere, do you think? Do you think he really believed he'd been stabbed in the back by <laughs> Satan? I think religion provided him with a helpful cloak in these dark, dark hours. I would like to refer you to chapter 8 of St. John's Gospel, the theme of which is that the truth will set you free. He said, I can't understand why people don't realize that I actually am sorry about what I did. And I think those are the, that was the channel he used to try and get people to believe him, and he didn't. Was his penitent sincere? Well, no. He, um, he, he changed his, his version of events a number of times in the aftermath of his exposure. Uh, usually when he, somebody come forward with more evidence. My initial denials of involvement made publicly and to the UCB were untruthful. Did you feel betrayed? At times, yeah. But you know, Hansi always came back strong in the sense of the remorse, the repentance, the, uh, the honesty to me at certain times. Sadly for Hansi, the United Cricket Board of South Africa wasn't nearly as forgiving as his pastor. They banned him for life from all involvement in the game. One official remarked that he shouldn't even be allowed to play beach cricket. Was he a crook? Yeah. 
Was he a hypocrite? Yeah. Was he a liar? Yeah. Did he betray not just his friends, his family, his teammates, himself, but South African cricket as a whole? Yeah. He betrayed cricket and he betrayed South Africa, I think. Hansi had disgraced himself and his country, but many South Africans were still willing to forgive the penitent sinner and hoped he'd one day be allowed to play again for South Africa. It wasn't to be. On the 1st of June 2002, he hitched a ride in a private plane. It flew into a mountain. He was killed instantly. No one knows the real scale of Hansi Cronier's corruption. Since his death, investigators have discovered no fewer than 72 offshore accounts in his name. And yet, in death, the people he betrayed most have been most willing to forgive him. His funeral was shown on state television. I honestly believe that all people make mistakes. If that hadn't been the case, why would we need a religion? Or why would we need Christ? And I think he made a very serious mistake. We will always condemn the deed. We have never condemned people in the school. I don't think that's right. I don't think that's our Christian job. It's a lesson to all of us that whoever you are, whatever talents and gifts that you have, if you don't work on your character, then whatever gifting you have will actually destroy you. The reverberations of Hansi Cronier's death were still being felt in February this year as South Africa played host to the Cricket World Cup. Hansi Cronier couldn't reconcile the teaching of his religion with the rewards and temptations of top-level cricket. But are sport and religion ever truly compatible? See, and Labour carries, carries away.